Welcome to the Bailo Report. I'm Jen Bailo. Our guests this week are sort of new to Rochester. Let's see, you came when? Uh, this past July. In July. And it took us this long to get you in the program. But next year we'll do it before Christmas. And it's Major Cornell Baller and Major Candace Baller. Yes. Right? That's right. That's right. I pronounced that right. You got it. Okay, <laughs> now this is your first appearance on the Bailo Report. And so you have a lot of viewers that uh, are faithful, loyal viewers of the program. Do you want to tell something about yourself that uh, you'd like them to know? Where did you go to school? How did you get to be majors? Um, sure. Yes, um, I grew up in Rockford, Illinois, just near Chicago, and um, was always part of the Salvation Army as it was my church growing up. And so and my family went to the Salvation Army for many generations before, so I've been my family and I have been part of the Salvation Army for many years um, and several generations. And so, yeah, so the Salvation Army has been a very important part of my life. And in growing up, it just kind of felt that this was God's leading, was to be um, full-time ministry in the Salvation Army. Went to our seminary and met my future husband. And mm -hmm. um, he, yeah, so we've been part of been together in ministry for 30 years. We've raised four sons, and they're all in different places around the United States. We're grateful we have two here in the Minnesota area. Um, so yeah, so we've been part of the Salvation Army and been, lived in many different places, and we're very glad to be here in Rochester. And you also had some overseas experience in Sweden. That's right. right. Salvation Army is in over 130 countries around the world. So we did have the opportunity to spend three years with the Salvation Army in Stockholm, Sweden. So, and that would be your home, right? Well, that's where my, yeah, my mom immigrated with her family in 1956 from Sweden. Um, so yeah, so that's part of my heritage is okay. Swedish. And how did you happen to choose Rochester? It was chosen for us. Um, we, don't, we don't have uh, usually a choice of where we go. Uh, we kind of uh, trust our, our leadership to uh, put us in a place that's a good match for our skills. And uh, so that's how it, how it happens. Um, we move uh, approximately every four to five years. Sometimes it can be uh, longer or shorter. Uh, but we go where, uh, where we're needed. Uh, and so uh, in our leadership structure, they thought we would be a good match for what's happening in Rochester. And there's a lot happening uh, in Rochester oh, with yes. Salvation Army. Oh, yes. Uh, it's uh, been wonderful to see its growth. We, are, we miss our store, oh. mm -hmm. but uh, I'm sure you hear that often. We but, do. Uh, we do hear that we miss the that the store is is missed here in Rochester, but okay. we do have a great store in Red Wing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well. Yeah. <laughs> it was nice when I was here, and it was right down the street. We right. go and bring things there and pick up things and just have a great time. But I know that it's hard to find people to work in the store and that uh, you had to give it up. Yeah, I mean, all that happened before, before our time here, so we're really not sure of the specifics of all of that, but we know that there are other ways to be able to donate and to give, because we do have a resource room for people to come if they need, they need clothing, if they need blankets, shoes, hygiene products, things like that, so they're, yeah. There is that ability for people to be able to give. Now, how was your Christmas? We usually have the Salvation Army people here in early December, so we can talk about your Christmas dinner for everyone and 
and the bell ringers that you need. And we have a lot of very helpful volunteers. So how was your Christmas this year? Well, if I could sum up Christmas in the Salvation Army in one word, it's busy. Uh, we have a very full calendar during the Christmas season of activities. Uh, we, we serve lunch uh, every day, Monday through Friday, but we also do a big Thanksgiving dinner and Christmas dinner that's open to the public. Uh, both of those uh, went really well this year. We had good volunteer support as well as a great meal for everyone who wanted to come out. Uh, we do our major fundraising campaign during the Christmas season. You just mentioned that, the bell ringing. Uh, during Christmas, we're raising money not just for uh, our Christmas activities, but it's really about 40 to 45 percent of our year-round budget. Uh, so it really affects what we're able to do in the rest of the year. So our Christmas fundraising goal uh, was $1.1 million. Uh, it sounds like a lot, but it's, it's really affecting our whole year. Uh, we raised uh, right now a little over a million dollars, so we're hoping by the end of January to finish out our fundraising and have that set so that we're really in a good place for the rest of the year with our uh, assistance programs. Uh, I'll let Candace talk a little bit about our, our Christmas assistance that we did too. Yeah, we, we like to be able to help families as much as we can, and this year being a difficult year, you know, we, that, that work continues. So. Um, we, we serve Olmstead County, not just Rochester. So we're, you know, we serve the entire county of Olmstead. And so we were able to give out a, over 1,700 toys to children, over 800 wow. children um, received um, gifts or toys through the generosity of a community that would donate and give toys and then trust us to to give those out to the families who need them, and then also um, a gift card for the families to be able to have a Christmas, a Christmas meal. Um, so that's always that's always a great, a great initiative to be able to serve families in that way. And so yeah, we just had a great a great distribution. Sadly, Cornell and I had COVID during that time, but with wonderful volunteers and staff, um, didn't skip a beat. So everyone was able just to, to do their part and to bless, bless so many families and children this Christmas. I, I knew about the COVID just because I got a phone call the night before we were going <laughs> to do the program. And they said, you can't come. Right. You, you tested positive. But did you get just mild cases? Mine oh. was pretty mild. Candace was a little bit more. But we're, we're doing really we're well doing now. Uh, we're, we're recovered. Yeah. So we're doing well. Yeah. Oh, um, I know. One other interesting thing that happened this last Christmas uh, was Salvation Army night at the uh, Rochester Grizzlies hockey game. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, we have a brass band at the Salvation Army, so they played Christmas carols in the lobby as people entered. They also played for the national anthem. Uh, we also did a, a teddy bear toss. Uh, as soon as the Grizzlies scored their first goal, all the fans had brought teddy bears with them, and they picked them up and threw them on the ice. Uh, it's a tradition we've been doing for a, a number of years. Uh, so we got several hundred teddy bears that night uh, to give out in our Christmas assistance. Wow. Uh, besides that, this year for the first time, uh, the Grizzlies wore the Salvation Army Red Shield on their jerseys that night. Uh, so the Salvation Army was on the ice with them. It was a lot of fun. A great way to be part of the community and uh, a great way to uh, to get some donations for our toy giveaway as well. That would be really exciting. Yeah, it was really a fun night. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were all good shape and the teddy bears. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. It, it didn't hurt them to be thrown on the ice. They were they were picked up really quick and <laughs> okay. uh, uh, brought to our brought to our center. That's wonderful. I think just one more thing to add, if um, you don't mind, is just, you know, Christmas, um, that whole, the entire effort for Christmas here is really reliant on a community that supports what the Salvation Army does. And so we are just thankful for those who gave of their time to ring the bell, to come and volunteer at our, the, the holiday meals, to be part of our toy distribution but also those who were generous in their giving, you know, when they come and they 
give in the kettles or they give a gift, a toy to be given to a child. So we are just so blessed in this community, community to have such generous people that just really want to help their own um, and just yeah, to be able just to share to share in that way um, is a real is a real joy. How many people do you serve in a year? In a year, when you consider everything that the Salvation yeah. Army does, our Christmas assistance, medical clinic, dental clinic, uh, rapid rehousing, help with rent or utilities or food shelf, uh, over 10,000 people in our community have received some type of help or assistance or contact from the Salvation Army every year. Isn't that wonderful? It is. Okay. Now, what is your most popular program? I don't know what pop. I'm not sure, what, what but I is, think which one is utilized the most. Our food shelf is is used regularly, and so our food shelf is um, available for anybody who just needs a little a little help with you know keeping cupboards stocked with food. And so um, the food shelf is a great resource. We have about 75 to 90 people that come for our, our daily meal, our lunch program. So it's, it's really just dependent on, on the need of an ind individual and we do what we can to, to support them. Um, you know, we have people with, with just the difficulties of the economy right now. People are needing assistance with rent and utilities and so we see that as an area that's growing. Um, so yeah, so I, I believe all the, all the services and the programs that are offered through the Salvation Army are greatly needed and are being, are being utilized to their full capacity. Good. Yeah, it's interesting when you think about our, our lunch program, you know, right off the top of your head, you, you think it's probably people who are homeless or need the extra food. But I think we have quite a few people who come to our lunch program who just need an outlet. Uh, they need a place to go. They need someone to sit next to uh, at lunch and have a conversation. Uh, so it's, it's a wide range of people uh, who seek out the Salvation Army. How many bell ringers did you have this year? hundreds of bell ringers. Oh, uh, great. Every time you see a bell ringer in Olmstead County, it's a volunteer. Uh, so we, we started a thank you campaign this year as well, and we told our other supporters, our advisory board members, just stop for a minute, even if you don't have something to put in the bucket, and say thank you uh, to the bell ringers. Uh, but so many different people sign up for that. Uh, service clubs or church groups will get together and take an ent entire day. Uh, a family will come out for a couple hours, and we see that a lot. A lot of parents want to start teaching their children, uh, giving back and being of service to their community, so they, they'll sign up as well. So we're a long way off from the next bell ringing season, uh, but sure hope everyone will put that in their heads for next year. Uh, just find a couple hours to come out and ring the bell for the Salvation Army. It's a fun experience. Uh, and it's a way to to give back and give some support and uh, it helps your budget it does uh, you mean, know it, it, these people who ring the bells are people we know and and uh, we don't ever walk by without dropping something in the bucket well and for many families and many people it's become part of their Christmas tradition to be part and to you know be part of the kettles and and to ring the bell and so it's just a lot of it's a lot of fun um, to be out to see the community to yeah to wish people a merry christmas and so it's it's good so thousands of hours have been given um, this past year to to help the salvation army at the kettles right this year over three thousand volunteer hours were, were given at wow. the kettles that's mm -hmm. great and now you have coalitions that you belong to in the county, uh, right, with other mm -hmm. groups. Why don't you tell something about those? Well, you know that um, the, need, the need oftentimes is greater than what one agency or one county department or things can handle and so um, we're very blessed in Rochester just to have a great networking of, of 
nonprofits, of government programs, of um, faith-based programs to be able to work together. And so, yes, yeah, so there are, there are several coalitions um, that, we, that we are part of, um, just because everyone meets a different part of a need within, within the community and working together makes us stronger and helps us to be able to help more people. Um, so yeah, so there are many different ways that we're just engaged with other groups and other nonprofits in, in, within our community, and so that's a real blessing. Um, we know that, that Mayo is a huge supporter, and we're we working with them very closely with our clinics and um, their generosity to be able to keep those programs going as well. So there's just a lot of, a lot of good collaboration that happens in Rochester. Are you... Uh able to get people to work uh, on the uh, programs that you have, for example, the programs for uh, people during the day, the adults, do you're not having a problem getting workers? We're, we're not having a problem, but we could always use more. Uh, so much of what happens at Salvation Army is volunteer driven. We have volunteers every single day uh, doing something to help support what's going on. And so we need people uh, who just come in and are at our front door to greet people and welcome when they come into lunch. Uh, we need doctors, nurses, and dentists to volunteer in the clinics. Uh, all, everyone who works at our Good Sam clinic uh, is, is a volunteer. Uh, we have some hygienist, uh, dental hygienists on staff, uh, but the dentists, the doctors, the nurses, they're all giving their time to, to volunteer. Uh, so what, whatever your skill set or level or time you have, uh, we have something that you could do at the Salvation Army. Our food shelf is completely run by volunteers. Uh, we have a person on staff who oversees it and keeps track of the food coming in and out, uh, but day to day it's volunteers who, who run that. So there's lots of opportunities, uh, not just at Christmas with bell ringing, but throughout the year for volunteering with Salvation Army. Do the local uh, retail stores help support your food shelf? The, the high bees and the, uh, the, the different uh, entities that sell it? Yes, we have, we have connections with some, some local places to donate bread and uh, have that. We, we work with uh, uh, the food bank and uh, uh, other places will do occasional food drives for us. Uh, so yes, we do reach out in the community to help keep the food shelf stocked. Okay, well, do you have any needs? Well, right now in the winter, um, we are always in need of like warm insulated gloves. Um, you know, we, we serve the homeless population. And so, you know, with these cold winter days, um, those, warmer, those warmer items are, are much needed. And we're always, we can always take food, especially protein items in our food shelf. Um, those are always very, very important. And we can always use more of more of those like peanut butter and things that are going to be a whole meal like hamburger helper and macaroni and cheese you know those types of things so yeah so there's always there's always something that we can use and so those those two right off the top of my head are probably what's very important okay well this is your chance to thank some of those people because uh, you know it is it's good food I mean it's not outdated it's no. not uh, I mean it's just really good right 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 it's all um, we do have food that's for, you know that we keep frozen so we have chicken and beef you know things like that so people can can have that um, we our goal is just to be able to provide a balanced you know a balanced diet for people and and it's people can come in and they choose what they would like so they get to go shopping um, just as if you're going into a grocery store and choose the things that your family will like to eat and yeah so they get to make the choices of of what they would like to have so it's a it's a choice food shelf and we are just 
it's a good service and, and families, um, elderly, everybody has access to, to that. And how big is your budget? Um, our annual budget is, I believe, around $2.9 million. Oh, okay. um, it's, it's a lot because there's a lot going on uh, at Salvation Absolutely. Army. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, do you still do daycare for adults? During the pandemic, the, uh, the adult daycare was closed, and I was told that was because of the regulations of, uh, you know, spacing people out yeah. and not gathering together at that time. What we did open up during that time and is still going is our homeless drop-in center. Uh, so uh, I believe before the pandemic, we had the, the lunch program, but that was it. Uh, but now we do have the opportunity for homeless to uh, have a place to go. And so that's especially important now uh, with the very cold weather, uh, they can come in and be, uh, be in our building and have a place to be. That's really great. And do you have a building on Broadway? Uh, we, our buildings are on uh, First Avenue. First Avenue. Yeah, yeah. so the, the, look for the big red building. Uh, that's our main social work building. We, sometimes we call it the barn or the farm. It has a, a little bit uh, of a look to that. Uh, but that's where you can go uh, for the, new, the meal that we serve from 1130 to 1230, Monday through Friday. That's our main social work office. So if you need a uh, food shelf or want to ask about any other type of help, you can go there uh, and inquire about that. Uh, just kind of a, across the parking lot next door to that building is a multi-story brick building. That's where the Good Samaritan Clinic is housed on the first floor. And so that's the medical clinic and the dental clinic. You can get help there with those things. And then the upper floors of that building uh, have uh, efficiency apartments uh, that, that we run. There's about 30 apartments. They are geared mainly for uh, people who are chronically homeless. Uh, it's a place for them to come in and stay. We have caseworkers who work with them uh, because uh, if you've been homeless for an extended period of time, you need a little extra help to get back on your feet and uh, really, honestly, to get used to living indoors again. Uh, a lot of uh, people struggle uh, with that, and so we're there to support them through that, and uh, they can stay there and live there, or it can be uh, the launching place for them to uh, move on to their own apartment. If you had one age group that you're looking to serve, what would it be? Zero to 150. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we look to serve. At, we're open. The Salvation Army, our services are for everybody. Um, we want to support families, to support youth. How can we, how can we help? Um, the elderly to stay connected um, with with others um, how can we support those who are just having a difficult time um, we want to do what we can do to support anyone who comes through our doors and sometimes that might be we need to connect them with with another place that has programs for them um, but really we will do our part to be able to to provide and to help where we can mm -hmm. oh my goodness um. I think one. I think one thing to mention too, like with the Salvation Army. So we are also a church, and so Cornell and I are, our ministers, our pastors. So we have a church. We have Sunday services, Sunday school, 9:30 on Sundays, and followed by a worship service at 10:30. Um, we are developing now after COVID. You know, working to strengthen our youth programming um, to get to get back on track with, with that, you know, because after COVID, everything shut down. And so now we're kind of re, restarting some of those programs. We have a women's ministries um, program and, and group on Thursdays. So, so we have a whole, we have a congregation too that we minister and serve with as well. So we, we believe we're really well-rounded because our, our, our goal is that we're going to provide holistically for individuals, you know, the spirit, mind, um, and body, and yeah, so we all have right. all of that. Are there any category of people that you're short of in terms of volunteers? In terms of volunteers, I think when we put out a plea to say we need assistance in a particular area, I feel like people are pretty responsive. 
here? The, the, the main need where we're always looking for people really is dentists and dental yes, hygienists. That's true. Uh, that's kind of the most specialized area that we need people. Uh, mm -hmm. But we can, we can use just regular off the street volunteers uh, sure. as well at any time. And I think if, if somebody even watching, watching your program today, you know, if they have a skill or a resource that they believe the Salvation Army could benefit in reaching other people, just have them to reach out to us too, because maybe there's something new that can, that can be started with, with the ideas of others, sure. you know, within the community. We had someone, we made contact with someone who uh, is just an amateur artist. And so she came out and taught an art class to the children who participate in our youth programs. Uh, and then we also tied into them because she and her husband have Santa and Mrs. Santa outfits. So we had Santa at our Christmas Day uh, dinner uh, for the community and they gave out gifts to everyone who was there. So almost any kind of volunteer. Uh, you, you can contact us and make a connection and, and uh, we could we can help you out with a place okay. to. Okay. Now, what do you like best about Rochester? <laughs> There's a lot that we have enjoyed since being here. We, when we first got here, we took, took part of the, um, what was Thursdays downtown? Thursdays downtown. That was a lot of fun. And we're part of, you know, we enjoyed um, walking through there and enjoy, we enjoy the restaurants that are here. Um, and so we're, we're just really getting involved as much as we can, just personally within the city as well. And so there's just, there's just a lot of th good things. I will say too, uh, I have a grand, we have a granddaughter in Minneapolis, so that's a good thing because we're close. <laughs> <laughs> we're close to her, um, well, and her family, her parents too, obviously. Um, but we're just really delighted to be here in, in Rochester. Okay. Um, what about your band? How many people have you got in your band? <laughs> I'll oh, let you talk about the band cause, because she's in the band. It's a it's a brass band. You know, it's your typical Salvation Army band that you might think of. You know, at Christmas time, playing at a kettle when you see some of those movies and. Christmas movies and things. I think we have about 11 or 12 um, people that are that are in our band. You know, no one is professional. It's just we people who have learned as they've been part of the Salvation Army how to play. And so it's yeah, it's it's just a way to be able to share the talents and gifts that God's given us to be able to yeah. Do you to need worship. any instruments? I don't think we need instruments, but I think if there's anyone that's a brass musician, if they're interested just to come and check us out, I would th think that would be something that would, that would be good. And they can just reach and call out, call the Salvation Army and we'd be happy to give them the information. Okay. And we do teach children uh, musical instruments as well, brass, and so if there's anyone who wants to help teach, uh, that would be another opportunity. Uh, the brass band does play every Sunday as part of our worship, but uh, then we also have a, a modern praise team uh, as well. You have such an organization and you are managing it, plus a church besides, and uh, the needs are so great in our community and uh, for the homeless and the people who are in need of short-term housing and medical care that they can afford, that uh, it's always been a bright light uh, right over the Salvation Army. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Because uh, you do so much. So we're at uh, the end of our half hour and I want to give you each a uh, little bit of time to uh, appeal for whatever it is you need, whether it's money or people or whatever. So you start with you, Major Cornell. Sure, I would say just the, the greatest thing is learn more about the Salvation Army. Uh, go to our website, rochestersa.org, or call us up or stop by and visit. We'd love to give you a tour and show you around and just Find out more about what Salvation Army is doing, and then maybe you'll see how you want to be a part. Okay. Now, Major Candace. I agree with that, obviously, with what um, Cornell has said, but I just want to express the appreciation of just the support of this community. Um, 
when we first moved here, um, well, when we move to any new community, we always feel like a community really supports the Salvation Army. We've been in very great places like that. But when we came to Rochester, you could just tell people loved the Salvation Army. It wasn't just support. I, it was really this expression of love and people were aware. And, and so that's such a beautiful thing to walk, to come into um, a community that just wants to be involved, that wants to help, um, that is supportive of the ministries and the programs of the Salvation Army. And so I just say thank you to, to all those who, who come alongside of us to be able to do so much. Um, the needs are great, so there's more to be done, um, obviously, but um, we're just grateful that there's a community that supports the work that we do. Well, you, you've got the people who are interested and supportive, and what you have to do is just invite them. Right. right. So we thank you for just opportunities like this to be able to share what, we're, what we're, we have going on, and there's always a place for someone to get involved, and so if they, people are, have a skill or a resource or something, just reach out and we'll see how we can match that up with what we have happening. And how much are you trying to raise by the end of January? $1.1 million. Well, so, but you've got... Well, we've got a million right now. Yeah. So we need, to, so we need to wrap like it up. And so it's like 100000 That's right. So if people have not given, they still can give? That's Yes. They can give any time, but we would like to meet this goal by the end of January. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Major Cornell and Major Candace Baller. Thank, thank you, Jane. And thank you. Uh, we'll look forward to the next event. And uh, do you still have your dinner? Your yes, in, dinner. in April we will be doing the Taste of Rochester. So if you're interested in that, again, go to our website and get the details there. Okay, and when will that be? It's in April. Um, I'm not sure of the exact okay. date off the top of my head. Okay, we'll uh, keep track of that. And uh, anything else that we can do to help, we will offer. And... Uh, We'll welcome you back. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Appreciate it. And thank you, our viewers, for your interest in those agencies and uh, businesses that support our community, especially the poor, the homeless, the uh, disenfranchised. And uh, thank you from us. And we'll be with you again next week. Same time, same channel. Have a very good week and a very good night.